That's, this is... Hey everyone, I am trying to go live again with uh, Mika. Mika, I don't know, uh, hopefully you can uh, get on. We're just testing this out. Um, I've got my technical support <laughs> behind me. Um, there he is. Uh, Mika, I don't know if you can hear me. I am going live again. And here she is, which trying this on. And let's see if we can add you on. It would be fun. And apparently I was on my live. I was on my personal feed before. And now, you know, I told you, universe, wanting, I was manifesting easy technology today. And something is not working that Mika can't add on. But um, yeah, I'm Sylvia from Rock the Cradle, a birth doula agency here in Montreal. And yeah, if you are watching this, let me know. Let me know who's watching this in the feeds. Uh, we're doing uh, these new episodes and I'm hoping that they will be dialogues because right now they're the doula monologue. <laughs> but uh, uh, Mika is asking me to send her again. It says you already are a guest on this broadcast, Mika. Um, it says adding, um, you're not being added. No answer from the live video guest. Hmm. Don't you just love technology, my gosh. Well, um, so I, yes. So today we're talking about finding confidence in your birth. And we thought of this uh, first birth. Uh, but anyway, it could be all births. And what we meant by, you know, why we wanted to talk about this is that in our prenatal classes, we are seeing a lot, a lot of anxious people, anxious parents, particularly first time parents. And, uh, you know, and that's totally natural, so natural uh, to be anxious. I remember, you know, with my first uh, baby being very, very anxious as well. And uh, so we thought we would talk a few minutes today about, you know, ways that you can, you know, go past that anxiety. And the points that we wanted to talk about were, uh, number one, knowledge is power. Number two, creating your team. And three, what are your values, your family and your personal values? So those were the points that we are uh, discussing today. Uh, Mika, I'm going to try again. I don't know if that's going to work or this is not working as we had expected it to, but these things happen. And I can't invite you again, Mika. So there we go. Uh, so number one, number one, knowledge is power. For sure, the more that you know, you know, often, sometimes that goes against us, uh, the, you know, what we're, the, the knowledge, how much knowledge do we want to have? Some people in our classes, everyone learns and prepares differently for their classes. Some people will prepare and read all of the books, and usually that's the birthing person. I've had a couple of times, a couple of people in my class, uh, classes, and it's the, it's the partner that is reading all of the material and not the birthing person. That only has happened a couple of times. Uh, usually it is the birthing person, you know, their body is changing and they want to read as much, as much as they can on a subject, um, you know, because their bodies are changing and they wanna learn about birth and they want to get uh, informed. Uh, so th that knowledge, definitely. How do we get that knowledge? Well, as you we mentioned, reading. Uh, I'm not, you know, there's internet now in our modern day society with internet. I'm not too much a fan of Dr. Google. I have lots of people in our classes, you know, talking about uh, what they've read online, specifically those uh, forum and those forum, the forums and mommy groups, uh, pregnancy groups as well. Sometimes those can be really, really, really scary. Uh, a second place to get knowledge would be at a really, really good birthing uh, class. Uh, we organize our own classes, but in your cities or wherever you are, there are other people, you know, other, you know, there are organizations providing them, either your hospital or a medical center uh, or the privately. Now, what's nice about the private classes, I know they're an investment, 
But what happens is uh, that the information is not always, uh, you know, biased. Uh, the information that we often get in a hospital run class is the information that the hospital wants you to know. Uh, example here, before I started our birth and parent with confidence classes, uh, some of my clients would tell me, I would say, let's, what did they talk to you about pushing in your, you know, your clinic class or your hospital class? And they said, oh, they're not going to tell, they didn't tell us anything. They just said that the staff there would uh, give us, you know, tell us what to do. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, you really, you need, you need to know how to push. Uh, you need to know what your choices are. And unfortunately, some organizations like a hospital will be biased and they won't always give you uh, those options. So, uh, you know, I do say look into your classes uh, and the private classes, look into those as well. You know, what is it that you actually want to learn? Some classes are just a teacher up on the front of the stage, you know, uh, or you know, at a table in front of 15 couples and just giving you information. Other classes are perhaps more yoga based. My colleague Jenny, uh, teaches a, uh, a birth workshop, which is very yoga based and for couples. Our class is very hands on. We, we teach also in yoga studios, but is very hands on. We're, we're teaching partners massage and acupressure. So that knowledge, what is it that you need as a, as a birther uh, is important to know going into your classes. You don't want to be disappointed uh, in your class. Definitely not. Uh, the Creating your, so knowledge is power. I really do. We, we teach all about, you know, having a doula. Doulas are usually about providing you with options so that you can make the right decisions for you and your family and your baby, you know, uh, throughout the day. Now, you're not going to have to make a million decisions, you know, just, you know uh, choices or decisions, but as long as you know what some of the major ones are. That leads us into the second point about creating your birth team and support team. That is such a crucial, um, a crucial decision that a lot of people don't feel they can make or they, they don't know how important it is before. Uh, example, choosing your caregiver, choosing your doctor. Uh, that is such an important uh, decision. Choosing where does that doctor work? What hospital? What is the culture of that hospital? That is so important. Uh, many times people say, ah, you know, Sylvia, I chose my hospital or my doctor because he worked at the hospital that was closest to my house. I didn't want to miss, I don't want to miss my birth, so I want to just be five minutes away. Well, you know, a first birth is 15 to 24 hours long in general. And you have lots of time usually to get to your uh, birthing place. Uh, please, if you have questions and uh, feel free to let me know, uh, I would love to answer them as well. This is a, you know, Q and A. I have no problems with that. Uh, I unfortunately couldn't get Mika on the line today for our dialogue. So this is more of a monologue, but uh, next time we'll, uh, we'll try and get her on. Uh, so yeah, choosing your caregiver. There, the, each hospital and each doctor has their own ways of working. Hospitals can be conservative. Uh, and if you have a very medicalized case, a very high risk birth, that might be the best place for you. If you're looking for more natural birth, um, non-medicated birth, go to a hospital that has more of that culture, that has the tools. Uh, there's a hospital near where I live well, that is very centered on women who, uh, you know, they provide all the tools for women who don't want to necessarily go the medicalized or medication route. So they have the baths and they have the balls and they have the stools. Um, so a lot of women tend to want to go there. They may not be ready for the birthing center, but it's, it's kind of like in French, we say the juste milieu, uh, right? You know, going in between a hospital and a birthing center, but go to a hospital that has the various tools. Creating your team as well. Who is going to be with you to support you during this such an immense, you know, time? It is only a day, a day and a half. Some of my clients might say two. <laughs> Let's not go more than two. Uh, but who is going to be there to help you? Uh, is, it, is your spouse going to be there? I've worked with clients whose spouses were not able to be there. We've had a client... Uh, her husband was in New York and she went early and called him and he 
tried to get on a flight and in the end wasn't able to get there on time. She did have us as a doula, as a backup plan. So doulas are also an important part of the team. Uh, I had doulas for all three of my births and was very, very, very happy that they were there. They were also there for me, but also there for my, my husband, uh, who wasn't quite sure if, you know, how well he was going to tolerate birth. He doesn't really like blood too much. So he said, well, let's get a doula uh, in case he has to step out and I do need some help. Well, my doula could be there. And I had positive births. I can't say it enough. Uh, we don't hear enough positive stories, but my three births were amazing. And part of that was due to the, the information I got prior to that, prior to birthing, but also my support team. I felt really uh, uh, confident uh, going into my birth, which is so important. We want birthing moms uh, to feel uh, beautiful, powerful, strong, and safe. And uh, that their team surrounding that will help them feel those things. Um, I have a, I always say this to couples is that your partners know you best. They love you uh, so much, much more than I ever will be able to love you as your doula. Uh, but I, as a doula, know birth, which your partner may not know. So we make a great team and that's what it's all about. We don't want the birthing mom. We don't want you to be alone uh, during this time, this you know intense moments uh, that you're gonna go through during your day. Uh, definitely not. Uh, so having you know a good team there. Some people say they're gonna have their moms or sisters or friends. That's great. Uh, as long as you have a relationship, in my opinion, that you have a relationship with them, uh, that you can say, you know, I really need some time alone with my spouse. Would you mind stepping out? Or if you find your mom uh, is, is not coping well with seeing you in so much pain and you're more worried about her than you are, you know, focusing on yourself, well, then you can, you know, ask her to leave. Uh, but sometimes, you know, the, all, the, 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 your mom's, own you know baggage from her birth will come out uh during your birth and sometimes that's not they're not always the best support person so you really want to choose your hospital your doctor wisely uh have your spouse there all they need to do is to provide you with lots and lots of love have a doula there if that is your case not everyone wants doulas but uh definitely that is a choice i did not know doulas existed before giving birth and i would say about uh, 10% of births right now, there are doulas in the room with clients, with, with, uh, with couples. Uh, so there are lots of people that still do not know. You'd be surprised how many people don't know about births, um, or about doulas, excuse me, uh, before actually uh, go, you know, having their birth. Some people will have a doula the second time around because they maybe perhaps didn't have the greatest birth the first time and didn't know about doulas then and then decide for their second time, uh, you know, second birth, that they want to have a doula. Hi, Jimena. Mm, I give you kisses. So nice to see you there. She is a lovely client who birthed uh, her second baby a few weeks ago. Uh, so lovely you can be uh, with us today. The third point uh, to talk about today is birthing, you know, with our values and um, Mika is very, uh, you know, very, very in tune uh, with this part um, and this mindfulness uh, that we that we bring uh, to to births as birthing mothers. Uh, the questions that we ask are: What are your values? Uh, what kind of person are you? What kind of birth would you like to have? This even goes further into our parenting styles. Uh, what kind of values do we want to bring to our parenting? Uh, sometimes we get off track, you know, do they really, you know, it just depends on the day. Sometimes our kids push us to the limits uh, and we don't necessarily always have the confidence, but always coming back to what's important for us uh, in terms of our values. And as a couple, if you do have a partner and you're going through this with a partner, this is a really good exercise uh, when you're preparing for your birth to talk about your values to do you have a family motto like love adventure 
uh, surprise or, you know, what, what is it? Honesty, caring, knowledge, all of these types of things. You can make a list and brainstorm as a couple. What do you want to bring into your, into your birth as values? And this will also go into your parenting. Um, Oh, thank you, Jimena. She says, it was great having you as my doula in my first birth. You gave me confidence and supported me a lot. Oh, and what an amazing birth uh, that was. I, will, I, I, remember mo um, I remember all of my births, uh, but Jimena's was very, very special. Um, yeah, always remember that. Uh, so yes, so values. What are your values going into birth? And um, lots of... Um, we work a lot with mindfulness. I don't know if this is something that everybody necessarily knows what it is. There are lots of, you know, I don't like to say meditation because sometimes we have a bad sense of what meditation is, but mindfulness, being mindful of our thoughts uh, and that confidence and our thoughts really, really can go hand in hand. Uh, when I, you know, if we are extremely afraid, well, that poof, will manifest itself into our body. Uh, but are we taking the time to listen to perhaps some positive birth stories, perhaps some podcasts, some hypnobirthing, perhaps mantras and positive affirmations? Or are we listening to the scary story <laughs> that our colleagues might be telling us at work? Uh, there was a guy that I used to work with when I worked at the university and he came up to me and put his hand on my belly and he says, ah, oh, you know, oh my gosh, you, you don't know the story of my sister's cousins, you know, my sister's birth, it was a horrible. I'm like, no, don't tell me. I want to fill my mind with positive stories um, and positive affirmations because going into birth, uh, and that's what we're talking about today is finding that confidence well, it's not listening to a bunch of, uh, you know, stories, horror stories and traumatic and dramatic birth stories. There are tons of those and you will be able to share them with colleagues and friends and your family after the fact uh, and hoping that they won't be traumatic and dramatic, of course, uh, but uh, that you will be able to share afterwards. But going into birth, we want to uh, have people that are uplifting and that are mindful of those, you know, our headspace going in. So finding that confidence. So yes, yeah, so great. Yes, Mika. Yeah, Mika, do some chats, whatever you want to add in there. Building confidence from within. Uh, going into birth when we're super anxious, it will come out in your body. You will be hard, 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 and it will be very hard. Uh, it'll be a, a more difficult birth rather than if we are accepting what is happening to us uh, and that we let the, the, the baby come down and do its work. Of course, birth is so is very intense and this is easier said than done sometimes. Uh, but it is such, it is an exercise that we practice. Uh, and again, coming back to that, having the knowledge of what's happening to me, me allowing allowing, uh, you know, making the right decisions for my body and my baby, uh, not being pushed around, not feeling that we're being pushed around, having a voice to demand what we want, you know? Uh, if I don't want them to say, break my waters, well, I need to be able to have that voice. Having the team around us uh, to encourage us during that day, uh, and the, throughout the pregnancy and the birth and parenting beyond takes a village. Uh, having that doctor, those lovely nurses, your spouse, your doula, your family. And then coming, you know, within. Yeah, Jimena says a positive mind really, really makes a difference. Uh, and it is something that you can work on, particularly if you know you are very anxious. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you are interested, we do have classes uh, every month. Uh, we do have doula services, whether it be birth doula services, postpartum doula services. We're here to help. Uh, what we want is for people to love their birth stories. It really makes a, a big difference going into your motherhood journey. Imagine if you are on cloud nine, uh, what difference that makes. Uh, on your parenting journey and for those around you. A positive birth is what we're all about and we want to help you 
uh, have those experiences. We don't guarantee them. Of course we don't. We don't know. You're going to make a great plan uh, for that day and the, the baby and the universe might take over and we might go right instead of left. But uh, the more that you are part of the birthing process and part of that decision-making process, you will uh, uh, have a more positive view of your birth and and really we want you to love your birth story so thanks everybody this was the doula monologue today we tried getting mika on it didn't work uh she's listening on uh with you and uh we'll try again these are going to happen every friday i'm going to have different guests and uh i do hope that it becomes a dialogue the next time thanks for watching and have a wonderful wonderful weekend thanks bye everyone